Hello and welcome back, and that is right, today I want to continue talking about the subject of Terra Master Raid Enclosures. I've already talked about it a little bit this month, and I'll be straight with you, I want to talk about it a lot more, because ever since the world of Thunderbolt kind of lost that big brand Drobo, all the different companies that have been trying to fight over what's left to try and take control of that kind of elusive Thunderbolt raid supported enclosure solution for a lot of photo video editors out there has changed hands quite a lot. And no one's really controlling the whole market. You've got some providers out there that are providing JBOD brainless solutions on the cheap. You've got other brands that are providing solutions that have got a hardware RAID on board. But you're locked into buying their own vendor hard drives. I'm looking at you, uh, Seagate and WD. And then you've got solutions that are being provided by companies globally that are RAID enabled and arriving unpopulated and one of the biggest and probably one of the most recurrent brands that I talk about here on the channel is Terra Master, a very affordable brand but at the same time with some very impressive solutions. Now uh, I've already done a hardware review of this. This is the D3, D8332 and now I've already done the hardware review and the Before You Buy 4 but in today's video, I'm going to show you the hardware RAID software. That is the software that you interact with on your PC or Mac system that is connected to this RAID-enabled box. And the RAID is being handled internally by what? I'm glad you asked. It is a high point RAID card inside. It's not just a brainless single SOC. This is a multi-lane SAS uh, connected uh, adapter cable there that is hardware RAID enabled inside that box. This is what you get when you purchase that box for the first time. And in today's video I'm going to show you what that software is capable of, how to create a RAID and ultimately give you a better understanding about what that particular solution, the D8 there on screen, I don't know why I'm pointing at it because it's right there just next to me on camera, um, what that solution is capable of. But the first thing you probably have already started noticing about this video is the ambient noise. Let's listen to it a moment. Right now we have got the fans of the NAS, we've also got uh, the cooling system of my laptop and we've got the hard drives, eight of them, all the enterprise class inside that uh, eight bay direct attached storage RAID enclosure connected via a Thunderbolt cable. The result is there's a lot more ambient noise in this video. Now I could have filmed this from a further distance. The RAID software doesn't necessarily need to be direct attached in that fashion, plus TerraMaster do include a three meter cable with this device. However, in order to give you some understanding what the noise level would be like, because many of you are looking at this solution because you're gonna be editing next to it, I wanted to include the ambient noise in the background of this video and hopefully it won't undermine the content too much. I am recording this video today utilizing OBS as you can see here on screen. So we may do some light performance testing later on but OBS has a tendency to kind of cut down on performance because of the way it saturates write activity during operations and any kind of benchmark test would require the read and write operation and bandwidth of my internal SSD. So. Again, we might look at performance, but predominantly what we're looking at today is that software. So, when you buy any hardware RAID solution from TerraMaster, um, you can head into their support section, and in that support section, you can find a whole list of information and contents about setting up the device for the first time, installing drive media, and more. And systems that have got um, a hardware RAID controller inside, like this one, have an extra couple of areas there. They've got the usual Thunderbolt 3 driver area there where you can make sure that you download the very latest driver of Thunderbolt 3 for your system. But what they also have are two very important downloads for you. Number one is the RAID controller driver. This is the driver that you need to install on your host system in order for you to be able to communicate with the RAID controller inside that enclosure that we're connected to there and again you can download the version that is a lot more appropriate to your own os there and again if i haven't linked to this in the description it's right on terra master's website just go into their support section and enter the model id of the unit you've got the next thing you need to download is raid manager pro now this is an application that runs on your local machine and works via your web browser and this allows you to interface with the system and when you interface with it for the first time you can then start configuring that drive storage media inside. This is an 8-bay. I've got four 
uh, WD, um, I believe, Ultra Star drives inside and four Seagate 14 TB drives inside. All heavy duty, just to give you some idea about how you can create individual raid pools if you choose to or one giant raid pool if you so be it now i've already downloaded and installed this software and as you can see in the web browser i've opened it up and it is here again if you're running a windows system just put in there in the search area raid manager and if you installed the free software it will appear there now again you need to use the login information and it will be inside your um, documents when you set up the device for the first time. I believe that password is PTB but do look into that. Uh, again it will be listed inside the documentation with your device and the username is always RAID. You can change that later on. For now click login and there we go. We are now looking at the user interface of our RAID system. And as you can see there, there is the Rocket RAID controller that we're utilizing there. And along the bottom, we've got those storage bays, all eight by bays, all populated with drives already. I've not created our RAID configuration. As you can see, there's our available capacity and we can start playing around. So first we can go into the physical controller area here where you can update the driver to that controller, uh, the RAID controller inside if you choose. And again, if you really want to, you can actually go inside this device, remove that RAID controller and replace it with a more powerful one. To be, to be frank, this device runs absolutely fine with the RAID controller running its very own controller, uh, the RAID controller card running its own controller and it is connected in turn to another controller board which is our Thunderbolt controller and those two working together is how this system runs so well. So if we go into the logical area you can see all of our drives that are listed inside and what we can do from here we can you know go ahead and try some of our options. So for example if we choose to we can create a brand new array. As you can see there are eight legacy disks and if you create a RAID the legacy disks all the data will be deleted. So what we can choose to do is select our RAID configuration. For those that need the reminder JBOD is just a bunch of drives. RAID 0 combines all of our drives into one giant volume. RAID 1 mirrors two drives. RAID 5 you need at least three disks and it pulls them all together utilizing a system of uh, parity spread across the disks with every wave of data giving you one drive of failure protection. RAID 6 does exactly the same thing only it's four disks and give you two drives of protection as the waves of data is written across in write, 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 parity, write, write, parity, write, etc. And RAID 10 and RAID 50 are combinations of both RAID 1 and RAID 0 that requires four disks and RAID 5 and 0 is a situation of creating a pool of RAID 5 and RAID 0 uh, topography together. So for this, what we're going to do is create ourselves a RAID 5. We can also give this its own name. We're going to call this one the Ultra Star RAID 5. Or Ultra Star RAID 5, that is what we're going to call it. And we can choose our installation method. We can do it very quick. We can do it to retain the old data if we choose. And we can decide how much system resources we want to do. So we're going to go for a quick initialization there for our RAID creation. On top of that, with caching policies, if you want to like utilize localized caching or drive caching, particularly if you're using SSDs, that is an option open to you, but otherwise leave that as default. And most of the options you can leave kind of as is. So for this, I'm going to select those four Ultrastar drives there. And then from there, we're going to go with maximum capacity because we could leave provisional space if we choose to, and then click Create. So as you can see, our raid is complete. It took around about a minute for the whole completion of the cycle of it, but even within about 10 seconds, the raid had complete, completed its initialization there. And as you can see there on screen, this raid is made up of those individual drives, and we can see our Ultrastar raid listed right there. And as these are four 10TB drives with one disk of parity, as you can see, we've got our 30TB there. Now, if we choose to, we can perform some maintenance on that. We can remove drives, start adding drives, moving back and Forth, lots of little bits and bobs that we can do there from within the software. Yes, this software looks quite old school, and you generally find that with most RAID controllers. Unfortunately, as much as we like a good, easy to read graphical user interface, most RAID controllers are always going to be displayed in this fashion. So, from here, we can go ahead and create a pool if we choose, and from here, we can start creating pools with those additional drives if we choose, as well as connecting logical devices if we choose to on the device in the overall network, mapping the whole system. Better yet, there's other things we can do with a number of these two, these different devices very, very easily from Thunderbolt. For example, here is an external USB drive here. This device that I'm utilizing right now, the T, uh, sorry, the D8 
has a docking station capabilities with display port, daisy chaining and USB. So if I take this drive and connect it into our TerraMaster, which is connected via Thunderbolt here on our localized system, what will happen is the system will recognize that we've got this drive connected and it will acknowledge that system and we'll be able to access that storage drive remotely. On top of that, we can go into the maintenance section here and in the storage manager, go far away, go straight in. And as we can see by going into our Windows storage manager and waiting for the device to power up, we'll be able to see our available of accessible storage areas. Now those storage areas have loaded in, we can see there a couple of disks can be initialized. And we'll just exit that, because as you can see, just down there, there is our 30 terabytes that we've created there with a partition from when we were doing the original initialization. And again, we can remove that very easily by deleting that volume there and deleting that partition. And then we're going to have this large area of storage that we can now use via the Thunderbolt connection on this device. And again, all we need to do is create our new simplified volume, click next, go ahead, create it, give it a letter. Let's go with the letter U, click next. We'll call this one Ultra Star Raid 5. Go ahead, click next, and boom, we've now connected to our Raid 5 configuration there on the TerraMaster. And there we go, there's our Raid 5, as well as the USB drive that we connected just now. So again, those docking station capabilities and the way we can manage this system is incredibly convenient, even if the user interface isn't quite as smooth as many of us would like. Now, carrying on with that software, we can look at some of the other things we can do. So let's have a look. If we look at that maintenance of that uh, support setup we've got there, if we choose to, we can go ahead and select individual drives and then from there, remove those drives or replace them as our RAID maybe goes into a degraded state if a drive fails or to add drives later on what we can also do is go ahead and rescan for any new added drives because this system does support hot swapping from there we can head into the settings of the device and indeed the software as a whole changing its identity and of course changing that password as we see fit as well you can even set up email notifications for if the system is down. Although do bear in mind you are gonna to have to connect remotely via FTP. Again, you can choose what you want the system to do in the event of things going wrong. So as you can see here on screen, during that raid initialization and the creation of that raid initialization, we were notified about stuff happening on the system. So if you're slightly worried about health checks not taking place or the drive hitting any kind of problems, you can find out all that information from within the software manager. From here, we can find out more information about the individual drives, their health, as well as running smart tests on individual drives if we choose, like so. We can choose to run a test, and it will read that information that's located on every hard drive very, very easily. Next, we can go to the recovery section, which from here, we can choose where, if we want to create a backup of some of the setup and configuration files, as well as running a recovery of array configuration, that can all be done here via the recover RAID array. And that's really it. There's a help section, which arguably is a little bit more limited than some of us might like, but the RAID software that this system arrives with at least arrives with a fully fledged professional uh, RAID controller and support via a graphical user interface. Although once again, it would have been nice to see something perhaps a little bit more intuitive and not quite uh, of an uphill struggle for some users out there. And again, creating array configuration is so incredibly quick. So for example, say we want to create ourselves a brand new array, a secondary array for that other collection of drives we've got there. But this one, we want to go ahead with a good old fashioned high performance, low safety net RAID 0. And we'll call that one Seagate RAID. From there, we'll keep the old data, we'll keep the original block size. Again, that does depend on you as a user and what you need. Select all the drives, go for maximum capacity and boom. It's as straightforward as that. And RAID configurations like RAID 0 are even faster to build with or without a RAID card as well. And what you end up with now is a, now a Thunderbolt RAID system here that is going to have both that RAID 5 and a RAID 0 there, that one of which can be used for high performance read write and another one that can be used for our legacy. And we can set up routines that allow data to be moved from one pool to the other, all of which been handled with this software and this device so incredibly easily. And although, yes, we're hearing the noise of the drives, yes, we're hearing a lot of that humming and whirring of the fans there in the background, there's still no avoiding that it's an incredibly convenient system. And, and it's one of the main reasons why I do feel that those of you who are migrating away 
from Drobo systems like this one may do well to consider Terramaster as not just an affordable alternative, but a viable alternative moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, do let me know in the comments. We're going to cover this subject more because I don't believe the Terramaster system is perfect. I do think it is uh, a system that's built with more value in mind and maybe if it had that fluid rate system I'd be happier and maybe if the chassis weren't so metallic and noisy it wouldn't bother me that much but apart from that I find it very hard to find up anything wrong with them and let's face it we drove her out of the picture there's a lot of photo and video editors out there that are wondering what to do about their raid storage let me know what you guys think in the comments click like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe to learn more and use the free advice section linked in the description below over to nas compares it's manned by me and eddie there's a free advice section and ask nas compares the community forum to answer your questions so check those out but otherwise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time